Thank you everyone for coming to Day of Chanel's 48th World, where we do Bible study reading or just reading the Bible for edification for our own self-worth and self-being and being good stewards for Christ. Okay, we're going back into Genesis chapter 30. We're going to be reading off of chapter 30, uh, 1 through 43. Okay, hope you all had a great day, morning or afternoon, whenever you're viewing this. And hopefully you're spending time, not with just me, um, learning and studying the Word of God for your own edification, your own understanding. You can definitely um, plead to the Lord to give you wisdom and guidance uh, when you're reading Scripture. So you'll know it for yourself. And not that I have to read it or discuss it or tell you about it. You'll have it on for your own edification, your own uh, rights to know what the Bible means and how you should conduct yourself on a daily basis. All right. But with that said, we'll get right on into the Bible reading of Genesis chapter 30. OK, when Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, give me children or I'll die. Jacob became angry with her and said, am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? Then she said, here is Bahala or Bilhah, my maidservant. Sleep with her so that she can bear children for me and that through her I can build a family. And this is so insane. <laughs> it's like we already had this happen to Sarah when Abraham and she couldn't have children. She gave her maid servant Hagar or Hagar to uh, Abraham to have children. And we saw how that worked out, right? Same situation is happening again. And I don't know why as we as women always want to put blame on our husbands when things go badly wrong, when we tell them or we suggest to them they should do things this way without fully thinking it out altogether. And then when the consequence comes from those first actions that were not really poorly thought out, then we have a discussion where we have to solve another problem that we ourselves as women got our husbands into instead of just praying to the lord in good faith good honesty being humble we had to go do the same thing that has already happened once before um so that was just my spiel i just had to get that out there to basically you know give y'all some clarification some comparison to how we set out and do things because we want things now. We want to do them. Or we want them right now. We don't want to wait. Or we're jealous or envious of somebody else. And we want the same, that same thing they want. And sometimes a little bit more. And it's just not always. Uh, it's not. We should not take it and see it. And, and have a viewpoint from that point of view all the time. Um, so those are the consequences. When we fly off the handle. And do things on our own or in our own time we want to do things so uh getting back to it uh you know jacob is trying to get rachel straight now you know this was the love of his life this is the one he wanted and you know he didn't want leah kind of threw her to the side but he just did what it is uh but we know he was very deceitful by stealing his brother's birthright as well as his inheritance so like I said, karma is a mother sometimes. It's a mother. But um, anyway, we're going to get on back to the Bible reading of chapter 30, verse 4. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're going to stay with uh, verse 3. It said, then she said, here is Bilhah, uh, Bilha, my maidservant. Sleep with her so that I, so that she can bear children for me. And, th and that through her, I too can build a family. So she gave him her servant, Bilhah, as a wife. Jacob slept with her, and she became pregnant and bore him a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me 
he has listened to my plea and given me a son. Then she named him Dan. Rachel, Rachel's servant Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob, a second son. Then Rachel said, I have had a great struggle with my sister, and I have won. So she named him Nap Atilia. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her maidservant Zilpha and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Leah's servant Zilpha bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, What good fortune! So she named him Glad. Leah's servant Zilpha bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, How happy I am! The woman will call me happy. The women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. During wheat harvest, Reuben went out into the fields and found some mandrake plants, which he brought to his mother Leah. Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrake. But she said to her, wasn't it enough that you took away my husband when you took my son's mandrakes? Uh, took away my husband. Will you take my son's mandrakes too? Very well, Rachel said. He can sleep with you tonight in return for your son's mandrakes. So when Jacob came in from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet him. You must sleep with me, she said. I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. So she slept with so he slept with her that night. I must uh, I must interject here. I just can't see these two women using Poe Jacob. Uh, for his manhood, and just so he can be with that wife. That's why I never really got uh, got the understanding of how kings had concubines and other wives, and how these women sat up there and waited until it was their time. I never understood that. Never, never, never understood that plot in life. But anyway, we see the two women are battling over a man that's supposed to be both their husbands. But he definitely ain't doing a good job. Okay, we're going to move on from that point. And we're going to go to verse 17, where it says, God listens to Leah. And she became pregnant and bore Jacob a fifth son. Then Leah said, God has rewarded me for giving my maid servant to my husband. So she named him Ishkar. Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. Then Leah said, God has time, wait a minute, God has given me permission to give. This time my husband will treat me with honor because I have bore him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Sometime later, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel, who listened to her and opened her womb. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph and said, may the Lord add to me another son. We go into where the subtitles Jacob's flocks increase. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, send me on my way so I can go back to my own homeland. Give me my wives and children for whom I have served you and I will be on my way. You know how much work I've done for you. But Laban said to him, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divin divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He added, name your wages and I will pay them. Jacob said to him, you know how I have worked for you and how your livestock ha has fared under my care. The little you have, the little you had before I came has increased greatly and the Lord has blessed you. Wherever I have been. But blessed, but now when may I do something for my own household? What shall I give you? He asked. Don't give me anything, Jacob replied. But if you would do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages, and my honesty will testify for me in the future. Whenever you check on the wages you have paid me, any goat in my possession that is not speckled or spotted 
or any lamb that is not dark colored will be considered stolen. Agreed, said Laban. Let it be as you have said that same day he removed all the male goats that were streaked or spotted and all the speckled or spotted female goats, all that have white on them and all the dark colored lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Then he put a third day journey between himself and Jacob when Jacob continued to tend the rest of his the rest of Laban's flock. Jacob, however, took the fresh cut branches from poplar almond and plain trees and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wound or the inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches and all the watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in, were in heat and came to drink, they matted in front of the branches. And they bore young that were street or spotted or um, speckled. Jacob set apart the young of the flock by themselves, but made the rest face the street and dark colored animals that belonged to Laban. Then he made separate, separate flocks for himself and did not put them with Leblanc's animals. Whenever the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in the troughs in front of the animals so they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and maid servants and men servants and camels and donkeys. Okay. So that's where we are with chapter 30. We will be discussing or reading tomorrow, uh, God willing, um, which will be October the 11th, um, chapter 31, where J Jacob flees from Laban. Okay. Thank you all for coming and joining me on my channel for another day of Bible scripture reading. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back, like I said, tomorrow or later on this evening um, to do more Bible study reading. Still in Genesis, but we'll be taking up in uh, Genesis chapter 31. Okay, peace and blessings to you all and to all a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.